is that time of the year for those that celebrated Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. How awesome is it that the episode of Seal Lounge fits right on Christmas Day? I am getting too excited about this, but well, hope you are having an awesome holiday season. This is the last out of the three episodes crafted for you to get in the mood for Christmas. And today I went crazy with the 12 of everything concept and came up with an interesting and more laid-back episode about the 12 male CU that impressed me the most in 2020. Note that this is a highly subjective episode, it's my opinions after all, so it is okay if you don't feel like this CU actually didn't impress you at all. However, I still invite you to listen to the reasons I list for each CU and participate in the comments or through message on Anchor, listing the CU that impressed you this year. Without further ado, let's kick off this episode of CU Lounge. Welcome to CU Lounge, I am your host Vanessa and today's topic is 12 male CU that impressed in 2020. 2020 is coming to a close and it is that time of the year in which reviews websites such as The Hand That Feeds HQ come with their lists of best songs, best albums, person of the year, artist of the year and more. As I was writing this year's features, those were quite a lot, I invite you to check the website for a fun read of those, I started writing on the side the male CU that impressed me this year. Working for The Hand That Feeds HQ has enabled me to be on top of what most male CU are doing in the music industry. This is something that I deeply love about this hobby of mine, and as such I get to experience the changes, the growth that male CU go over during every given year. It's pretty cool and it always makes me look back with pride seeing male CU putting an effort in being the better version of themselves. And you and I know by now how busy CU are and how hectic their work is. So, in this episode I will go over the 12 male CU that impressed me the most in 2020. This is an episode focused only on the music industry. Highly subjective list ahead. Things that I look into account when making this list. How much the CU improves their singers, their technique and voice tone, variety, versatility of their music, quality of the music released, performances outside of their solo careers. Without further ado, let's kick this off. Tasuku Hatanaka is deeply underrated. I seriously don't know why he doesn't sell more. His sales numbers were dangerously low, below 2000 copies for each release. If you are aware of how much it costs to produce a CD, you are in the knowledge that Hatanaka as a solo artist didn't make much money this year from his career as a solo artist. Why does it happen? I would love to know this, but his overseas fans don't understand what is happening and of course I do not know what is going on in the minds of Hatanaka's Japanese fans. I reckon he was quite popular, so I really can't grasp how suddenly his music is selling peanuts. Either way, Tasuku Hatanaka had a pretty interesting year. Three singles were released, three singles with different themes, concepts and sonority. Exposure wasn't an issue as two out of his three singles had songs featured in anime or TV series. Now, where people see versatility, and there is some, I see the bigger picture and I find Lanty is not knowing what to do with Hatanaka's solo career. 
most pop artists like himself venture to a wide variety of music genres, usually what is trendy in a given time, but they always come back to a sound that you can call a trademark of theirs. Tasuku Hatanaka doesn't have a trademark sound. Did you notice that? He has shifted so much through music genres, styles, tempos and even his singing style that you can't immediately say Oh, that sounds like a Tasuku Hatanaka song. You'd be lying if you said that because it doesn't have a trademark sound. What he does have are his powerful vocals, a unique voice tone and a skill set that, well used, can make him shine. I really enjoy his singing and I like his showman style, not too cocky but confident enough. But I really can't fathom why there are so few people actually supporting him. Still solid year as a solo artist, at least quality and variety, sales we all know were bad. And he was active in other 2D music projects. Akan Yatsura stands out as the high-profile group he was active in this year, but there are plenty of more projects under his belt, some with more success than others. Still, I enjoyed his 2020 in the music industry and sure hope some of you can look back and enjoy his music. Arthur Lounsbury I'll be upfront with you. I've never been a fan of Arthur Lounsbury's singing style. That's until Phantom Iris and Erosion debuted. His fans will of course say that Arthur has always sang in the same way, but for those like me that are not fans of his, he does sound different between projects. And that is the difference alongside voice tone and other things that are connected to everyone's personal tastes that made me enjoy his singing in 2020 and not in other projects he's been in in the past couple of years. So this year I found myself reviewing music performed by him. I didn't know what to expect but I know for sure that I wasn't ready to be impressed. His singing in Phantom Iris is... As a longtime fan of Visual K, I was thoroughly impressed. It was like someone completely different. It was Felix. And I enjoyed it a lot in the releases that were dropped by Phantom Iris in 2020. How natural and confident he sounds when performing in this band is something that I respect a lot. Few are the CU that can shift gears between projects and sound or embrace different roles in unique, different ways. Points for versatility. I am not entirely sold to the whole Erosion 5 vocal rock band gimmick, I guess I'll have to hear more from the project next year. As it is, he is a driving force for the group. I often found myself when reviewing, noticing that his vocals were in the background, holding the group and making everything sound solid. What I like about this sort of list of seiyuu that impressed me in a given year is that names that I wouldn't usually be a fan of make the cut. Arthur is talented as a singer and proved his mental in 2020. Daisuke Ono Most of you would probably not pick Ono D for a list like this. He seemed to have a comfortable year without standout performances. That's mostly what it sounds and looks like. He arrived in 2020 coming from a very successful and mature Deepenholic, so I was pretty interested to see where he was going this year with his music. And I feel that in 2020 he upgraded himself further as an entertainer. Stargazer, mini album with a premium feel, was released this year and once again Ono D was back with the two halves of his music, pop rock and funk disco. 
I enjoy both, so I can't complain, and although early on in his career I was quite apprehensive to him venturing towards disco music, I now enjoy it fully because he's been performing a tasteful blend of funk and disco. But that's not all. Onodi has vastly improved his singing skills, not that he was a bad singer, but he didn't really stand out much. This year he sounded confident, comfortable, pretty much in his element. Having fun and spreading that fun to us all. It was a pity though that we got very few opportunities to listen to new music of his. Basically we got one mini album and that's all. But I predict that 2021 will be filled with more fun, carefree and mature takes on his trademark danceable sound. Yukihiro Nozuyama Yukihiro Nozuyama is still seen as dice from Hypnosis Mike, and rightfully so. He still is in the first years as a Seiyuu, so it is only natural that he hasn't had that many opportunities to showcase his skills. So why do I rank him at 9th place? Because out of all members of Hypnosis Mike that are not rappers to begin with, I see you, Subaru Kimura, is the best rapper of them all. His technique is pretty good. For example, Scramble Gamble is off tempo. The song is all over the place in terms of tempo, instrumentalization, and there's many things that you, as a rapper, can be thrown off by. But in the recording I was impressed how he was sharp and never missed a beat. However, I thought that it would be insanely difficult for him to pull off that song without breaking the flow to catch a breath or missing the tempo because he's stressed. But did you guys saw his performance in that Abema TV live? He never missed a beat. Again, if you're paying attention to the instrumental, it's quite hard to follow a decisive beat to rap to. Yukihiro Nozuyama seems to be pretty good and I like that his rap game is that exciting to watch. Certainly the best rapper in the Hypnosis mic following Subaru Kimura. He's a big talent and I'd love to see what he can land next in the 2D music side of the music industry. I am not familiar with his singing, but as a rapper, he impressed quite a few times this year. So he's got a well-deserved spot on this list. Yoshiki Nakajima Yoshiki Nakajima is one of those male CU that I wish was a solo artist. While I have been enjoying his work in You Make, I find it too conventional at times. Is a bit more daring in Sir Vanity, but still you can feel that it is teamwork there, not just his input. He does have the tools to go out there and challenge himself in a solo career, but yeah, it doesn't seem like he'll follow the footsteps of his inspiration in the CU industry, that is Mamoru Miyano. In case you don't know, Nakajima is a singer and lyricist and is quite good at both. While I am not particularly a big fan of his tenor range, yeah, all Saidem fans were a bit shocked to know that Nakajima actually doesn't have a natural deep singing voice, he does plenty of awesome work with it. When he shifts to 4 baritone, that's when I am enjoying his singing to the fullest. Aside from the projects I mentioned earlier, he's also been active as part of Tobari and Pionix. Two groups that have a different sonority from everything else he's been doing in the 2D music industry. He's growing as a singer, now showing even more confidence and charisma. His versatility is never in question, he's incredibly skilled as a singer and adapts well to changes. But I still feel like he's playing too close to home and is yet to challenge himself with something that will make his creativity go free. Love these performances this year and I know for sure that he has the talent to mesmerize everyone in 2021. 
Shunsuke Takeuchi. A lot of people sleep on Shunsuke Takeuchi, but thing is, he's got massive talent as a singer, composer and producer. Contrary to many of the seiyuu featured in this episode, Takeuchi doesn't have a solo career. He's active as part of Amadeus, Quell, Autumn Troop and Clarity. In all these groups you can expect his deep melodic vocals to shine and give you that R&B touch that is pretty unique to his singing style. He's working Amadeus self-producing duo with a massive focus on hip-hop, R&B and EDM has been pretty impressive with him producing quite a lot of awesome songs that showcase different influences, paint unique soundscapes and set fresh vibes. Remember, he's still pretty young, so there's a lot of room to grow as a singer as well as a producer. Really looking forward to see what Shunsuke Takeuchi has awaiting for us in 2021. Shunichi Toki How to describe Shunichi Toki to you? He's a singer with a soulful voice and insane technique that is often underrated. That's how I feel about him. 2020 was a pretty interesting year for the talented male seiyuu, releasing a concept mini-album that took us all to the 50s and 60s. This was the first time a male seiyuu ventured to that era and dedicated a full release to it. Could it have been disastrous? If it had been another seiyuu, perhaps, but it's Shunichi Toki that I am talking about, so I had no major worries about how it performed. The only issue I had was with how Pony Canyon has provided him with songs that, at times, are too generic and not often make his talents on the vocal and interpretation sides to stand out. Toki was active in 2020 as a solo artist, as well as in a wide variety of 2D groups. From A3's Summer Troop, Altesimo, Akan Yatsura, Anthos, Growth and Swing Cats, Toki was everywhere and delivering top performances on every project he was lending his talent to. Out of all the groups I mentioned, I followed him closely in Anthos and Growth. His work on both is worth of respect. Is as much a driving force, the core of those groups, as he is the perfect facilitator, making all members blend well and shine. If Toki is in your 2D music group, you can expect him to take everybody's harmony game to new heights. I love this about Toki. Shoya Chiba Another male CEO that had an awesome year was Shoya Chiba. Similarly to Arthur Lounsbury, I wasn't that big of a fan of Chiba's singing tone. I am not fond of nasally singers, remember what I told you on episode 16? Voice tones or quirks are usually what make you like or not someone singing, and that characteristic about his singing has been a major drawback for me. There are no questions about his talent as a singer, guitarist and music composer. He's insanely good, but his singing tone... That's what was preventing me from fully enjoying his performances. However, in 2020 it was inevitable that I'd find Shoya Chiba in some of the music projects I would be reviewing. And interestingly enough, this was also the year in which I've started to change my opinion about his singing. I reviewed his work in Erosion and Noise Nova, and I must say that I was pleasantly surprised with how good he sounded and how versatile he was in two polarizing projects. In case you're not familiar with, Erosion is a five vocal rock band created by Reject, yeah, I know, that's a name that raises some quality and management red flags. And Noise Nova, a new project from the creators of Dig Rock. This one focused on an EDM-centric group with versatile double centers. 
two unique projects, both still under the radar for many people. If you can, please do check both. In case you have any doubts about any of these projects, I invite you to check my reviews of the CDs released by both franchises this year. With Erosion, Chiba did Screamo, something that many say you avoid as if their life depended on that, and went raw and rough for his performances. This was something that honestly I wasn't expecting, especially Screamo. Some of you will say, but he didn't do much Screamo in Erosion songs. True. Thankfully, he didn't, because Screamo performed by someone with no experience or not comfortable with the technique can seriously damage their vocal cords. Kobayashi Masanori, Tatsuya Suzuki and Soma Saito have managed to pull that off with comfort, especially Suzuki, as some of all Codex's songs are that heavy. But you don't hear about other CU wanting to venture to Screamo. Not only it doesn't sound trendy, but it's also considered inappropriate for CU to do that in the ears and eyes of many Japanese fans of male CU. At the same time, and this one is what I consider to be a valid reason, Screamo is seriously draining and requires a lot of technique to be pulled off. I liked what I listened to from Chiba with Erosion. The band still has a long way to go, but so far they are entertaining. Moving to powerful EDM meets hip-hop and R&B outfit Noise Nova. Sharing center duties with Soma Saito is no easy task, as Saito is well known as one of the best singers among male CU, rightfully so if you take time to analyze his technique and skills, and it can be a bit intimidating to share the stage with him, especially for those, like Chiba, that admire him. Shoya Chiba held his own and his voice tone ended up working pretty well alongside Saito's clear vocals, creating a synergy that impressed me. Chiba then impressed in his character's solo song, Deep, delivering a powerful R&B ballad performance. Rock, pop, R&B, EDM. Shuya Chiba fit almost all music genres this year, and yes, I am not forgetting about Sparklu or Kashkomi. Safe to say that 2020 was also Shuya Chiba's year. Shugo Nakamura. It is undeniable that 2020 was a pretty awesome year for the talented singer-songwriter. Shugo Nakamura released two stellar singles, Colorful and Oh No, and was even more on fire in his work with Quell, group that tackled the card series and most recently kicked off the Neo X Lide series. It is also undeniable the quality that Nakamura has as a singer. While some people will say that they don't recognize talent in his singing and would rank many other seiyuu above, some of those that I don't mention in this episode, I believe that Nakamura is often overlooked, making him one of the most underrated talents among male CU in the music industry. What I can agree with some people is that his singing tone is not for everyone. But that can be said about all artists on this list. Taste is subjective. What for me are good voice tones for you can be awful voice tones. Well, that's the beauty of music and voices. Everyone experiences the same things in completely different ways. Discussion, healthy discussion, opens opportunities to understand music in ways you hadn't imagined. Same thing with reviews. That's why I love to review music and then get feedback on what you actually thought about those releases. It is interesting to find that sometimes, across the world, there is someone that feels exactly the same as I do when listening to an artist or say you, or that someone interpreted the songs in completely different ways from mine. Once again, 
That's the beauty of music and voices and their subjectiveness. Now back to what I was saying. If you really like those deep-voiced singers like Tadokoro Hinata and Shunsuke Takeuchi, you won't find that in Nakamura's vocals. However, he shines time and time again in his mid and upper range and, must I remind you, his upper range is no joke. He can hit hard as nails high notes, belt and be a dynamic member within a group adapting to the occasion or requirements for the backing vocals. You don't find that many CU even on this list that can do that as singers. I find it as one of Shugo Nakamura's good points. Additionally, in 2020 Nakamura kept challenging himself with new types of songs and improve his acoustic sound. He brought funk to the table in Ho oh No, one of the best singles released this year, and went the sweet acoustic route for Colorful. His vocals keep on shining and you found him in Tsuki Pro's Neo X Slide series going head to head with Takuya Gucci and delivering a masterful performance, or in Quell's heart, in which he steals the show with his vocals. 2020 was an awesome year for Shugo Nakamura, that's for sure. Yuma Uchida Yuma Uchida has proven his worth this year. Last year's releases were close to perfect and I am specially in love with Horizon, which was, in my opinion, one of the best albums in 2019, but there was something missing overall. 2020 proved to be a year in which Uchida was in a go big mentality. He released music catering to a wide variety of fans while trying to be as versatile as he could with his sound and performances. He's still an R&B pop artist, but this year he released rock music, hip-hop, ballads, peppy summer tunes. But he didn't limit himself to only performing those songs, he interpreted them and that gave way for awesome performances. Out of all releases of this year, Over was the one that caught me off guard. There was a lot of rock and hip-hop in it, with Uchida leaning towards an urban pop vibe, something I was not expecting to be a thing for him, remember? I still consider him an R&B pop artist. Vocally, there's no doubt that he is insanely talented. Mid-tones, lower and upper range are used with some frequency and he performs really well on both ends of the spectrum. He is consistent and charismatic in his performances, something that most of you, if you're fans or familiar with his performances, will know. His performances are hypnotizing. I also love how he is the type of singer that feeds off energy, being as good or better on a live setting as he is on record. His energy is second to none, his singing is clear and confident on a live setting, his dance moves are nothing out of the ordinary but pretty slick. Head to these, the massive single Image, released in the summer and the English version of New World and it is safe to say that this was a successful and experimental year for Yumo Uchida. In my opinion, he does sound like he's having a blast performing as a solo act and I dare say we can all expect him to grow even more as a singer in 2021. Only thing I'd really love he had tried was to compose music or write lyrics. Would be interesting to hear how his music would sound like without interference by King Records. Makoto Furukawa It was inevitable that Makoto Furukawa would feature on this episode. Did you listen to his first full-length album from Fairy Tale? Did you? That's an absolutely perfect album, and one that is so fresh in comparison to all the music Mail CU release that I simply can't stop having a big grin on my face. Furukawa did it. 
that album is flawless. I know Makoto Furukawa as a solo artist might not be everyone's cup of tea, after all he is performing jazz, not trendy pop music. But that is one of the reasons his music stands out. The other reason his music stands out is because you can tell that jazz is Furukawa's element. He is at home performing music with the flair, class and flamboyance of jazz. His vocals keep up and most of the times outshine the instrumentals. For me, Makoto Furukawa is one of the most exciting talents active in the music industry. He is also one of the best singers, easily. Still underrated, which I find it odd. The gal and confidence to be a solo artist that performs jazz music is something that I really admire about him. Jazz is a music genre that ages really well. And I envision Makoto Furukawa's music to still sound as good in 10 years as it does right now. I am of course assuming he won't change from jazz to other music genres any soon. Same can't be said of today's solo artists that perform trendy pop. It will not age well, that's a fact. Makoto Furukawa went the extra mile with his first full-length album from Fairytale and was awesome all year round as a member of several 2D music projects. I followed his work closely as part of Soara and Rubia Leopard, but he was also active in Oshikuzu Ryoda and Cafe Parade. In Soara, Furukawa has been getting more spotlight, especially now that there is equal lines distribution. With Rubia Leopard, Furukawa has been a beast. Awesome set of releases this year in which we all got to listen to him performing grunge rock with some touches of funk and groove metal. With the Rubia Leopard, Furukawa sounds comfortable and his performances come natural, regardless if you're requesting of him to be rougher or gentler in his approach to the lyrics. Makoto Furukawa was undoubtedly one of the male CU that impressed me the most in 2020. Soma Saito The undeniable number one spot goes to a man that challenged himself time and time again and was on the vanguard in 2020. Soma Saito had a flawless 2020 in the music industry. He kicked off the first ever trilogy by a male CU, the In Bloom series, which I believe it is worth mentioning. Petricor, Summerholic and Palette were a pretty well-rounded and deadly trio in which fans found Saito further spreading his wings as a singer-songwriter. He was more emotional, more incisive, more intense. There was in a way a connecting thread to those releases, not to mention unique nuances in production in all three songs that I had a blast going over in detail in the respective reviews. Then we reach December 2020 and Saito goes all out with a bold sophomore album with In Bloom. He showed us that he is growing as a composer and lyricist. He also showed his intentions of venturing to doing the arrangements for his songs and helping in production. And he got his chance in In Bloom, counting with an arrangement credit in Bookmark. Remember what I was saying about Makoto Furukawa and how he stands out because of how unique his music is? Same thing happened with Soma Saito. His brand of emo pop rock is quite interesting and refreshing within the seiyuu industry. No one is crafting music like his. That is a massive plus. Saito went the emo pop rock route, which puts emphasis on his songwriting and his performances under the spotlight. You can tell that he is serious about his solo career. You can tell that he loves music by how much he keeps pushing himself further. And his vocals? He improved a lot in 2020, not only as a solo artist, but also as a member of a wide variety of 2D music projects. 
He was active as part of Solids, Noise Nova, Fling Posse, Trigger and Twink. In all these groups he showcased his versatility as a singer as well as he made sure to impress with his rap skills as part of Fling Posse and Noise Nova. It was interesting how with Solids and Trigger Saito was showcasing his newly improved vibrato something that he's mentioned he had struggled with in the past, as well as lower-toned performances, something that isn't characteristical of him, but that by now is shown time and time again that he can pull off even as a tenor. Twink is yet another group in which he displays his range and in this case his upper range. Noise Nova was the wild horse. EDM R&B centric group with a lot of focus on blending various music genres plus having double centers. Noise Nova's sound and format are nothing quite like what Saito has done before, so it was pretty refreshing to find him covering quite a lot of his range for this project, performing with a close to perfect English pronunciation and rapping plus tackling EDM with a lot of confidence. If there was one thing that Soma Saito showed this year is that he is a chameleon and has an undeniable talent as both a singer and songwriter. 2020 was his year and of course if everything I've said before wasn't obvious enough, it was the male CU that impressed me the most this year. A lot of CU made their solo debuts this year. A lot of new 2D music projects were launched this year. Many CU improved their skills, some went outside of their comfort zone, whereas others spread their wings like never before. I don't know about you, but I always feel proud when I see or hear CU wanting to improve themselves, pushing their limits of creativity being bold and bearing their hearts to their fans in the music they compose or perform. The 12 male CU that I listed in this episode are just but a fraction of all the CU that were in good form in 2020 in the music industry. Once again, these were my personal picks and those can and will differ from yours, that's why I want you to tell me who were the male CU that impressed you the most in 2020 and why? You don't have to list 12 male CU like I did, that's a bit overkill, but let me know who were the male CU that impressed you the most in 2020 and the reasons why you chose them. Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss the hand that feeds HQ's weekly mail CU and music related content, hit the subscribe button. I'll return next week with another episode of CU Lounge. Once again, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year!